So today's video is with Adam Grist from Laying Specialty Trailers. Uh, they make restroom trailers for the rental industry. And uh, he goes into basically all your questions. There's been a few people waiting for this video to come and I'm glad we finally got to do it. So he answers basically everything and then kind of tells you about his trailers specifically. So here it is. All right, so I'm Adam, the tent guy. I'm here with a Adam Grist from Ling Specialty Trailers. How you doing? How you doing? Doing Good. well, how are you? Oh, uh, getting through all this. But um, <laughs> you're with Ling Specialty Trailers, but you're in the rental industry beforehand. So why don't you just introduce yep. yourself and how you kind of got started in the rental industry and then up to the point of where you decided to get into restroom trailers. Sure. So uh, I spent my whole life in the party event uh, rental side of things. Our family had a company called Windswept Event Rentals in Lake Trobe, PA. Uh, we primarily did um, special events, corporate, not a lot of uh, public fairs and festivals, more of the, the upper end uh, special events. Um, I'll never forget the first time I saw a restroom trailer. We were out uh, it was probably 15 years ago. We were out setting up a small 40 by 60 tent and uh, we were there, it was, I think it was in July, it was really hot, so we're all swinging sledgehammers, sweating, we got a couple trucks, four or five guys, and in pulls this old guy, like an F-150 pickup truck, pulling a restroom trailer, never even got out of the truck, just yelled to the bride if this is where she wanted it, dropped it off, he was in and out in about five minutes, and found out that he made about as much money on that event as we did, Right. so it was, that's when we decided that, hey, we, we got to get a restroom trailer. Um, so on the rental side of things, we bought our first restroom trailer. It took off immediately. Uh, that first year, I think we had three or four units uh, already, and we just kept adding as we went on. And uh, just over the years of doing the special events and working with the trailers, I kind of became dissatisfied with a few things that were on the existing trailers out there. Um, and we ended up building our own trailer kind of for our own fleet more of our customers and even our competitors started seeing the trailers and asking if they could buy them. And it's kind of how we got into the manufacturing side of things slowly. And then it just kind of took off from there. Right. Yeah. That's the story you told me on the phone when I first called you. And it's basically the way I've seen it too. We constantly, the same old dude would be showing up to our tents <laughs> and he either had a pickup truck or a van. If he had the van, sometimes he was getting stuck and we'd have to help him out. But uh, constantly showing up to the events we were doing, setting it up, and then heading out. And then, yeah, same thing. We were like, wow, we should start getting more of this pie, this whole party pie. And we got the tents. We are yep. adding more of this and the lights and dishes and stuff. But, we're, you know, the restroom trailer is there every time we're there. So let's take that. And uh, because we're already a rental company, which sounds like the same thing you, because someone's already booking all this wedding equipment from us they need a restroom trailer and we have it so then they just get it from us now instead of the guy who only owns the restroom trailer yes we also found um from a convenience standpoint before we owned the restroom trailers it was becoming somewhat of an issue because uh correlating the delivery with the restroom trailer and the tent you know because typically the restroom trailer had to be positioned you know, squared with a stake line or in, in the right position that could be accessed correctly. And then you'd have to work with the restroom trailer delivery company to, you know, get that all uh, coinciding. Once we started providing them, it was just a lot simpler. You could um, logistically time everything out. You could move it around. You could position it. It just worked uh, smoother. Right. And then also, if you're also going to be there, you can send another guy instead of in the box truck, in the pickup truck to, to yep. bring it with you. Um, yeah, so when we were doing it before we came into that same problem, like maybe the entrance to where the tent was going was small and the restroom trailer had to go in first before the tent yeah. could go in. And if we came in Wednesday and he wasn't coming in until Friday, then everything was messed up. So now, yeah, it's a whole lot easier. Exactly. But uh, Yeah, that was, a, that was always an issue for us. So that, that just became easier and easier as we grew our fleet yeah definitely there's been a few people on this channel who have been waiting for you to be on patiently they got a lot of questions about restroom trailers and even though i own two of them i don't i haven't done anything with them i don't know how they how, how it works i got i own it with two other dudes and they do the delivery and the maintenance and everything so uh 
people got a lot of questions on it. But uh, let's get into how. So you decided to start building your own trailers for, and you're in the rental industry, so you knew what you needed. So what are some things that you did on your restroom trailers when you when you're building them that are like differentiate from other ones? Yeah, some of the the major problems that we were having was um, ground clearance was constantly an issue. Uh, the trailers that we had previously owned, they're um, one of the leading manufacturers of trailers out there. The clearance was so low that every time we were trying to position them, um, you know, we were constantly ripping the scissor jacks off of the bottom of the trailer. You know, even just a, a steep inclining driveway, trying to get into the driveway, we we're ripping jacks off, let alone trying to pull them through the fields, uh, over curbs, uh, anything we had to do to get to our tenting locations. Um, so the, one of the first things we did with our units was uh, we built them as deck over units. So we had a higher ground clearance um, and we also got rid of scissor jacks. We have uh, swivel jacks that are top wind, so very fast deployment. And then they're, you're not able to rip them off like the other jacks. Right. So the, the swivel jack goes on like the side and swivels down. So it's out of the way. Correct. Right. On the bumper, it's a 5,000 pound where it just you, you pull a pin, turn it and the leg automatically drops to the ground. So very, not a lot of winding and it's completely protected. Right. Yeah. We, our last one this past year, we ripped off two of the jacks on ours and we seen some guy who owns the same exact brand as us and he modified his welded on or whatever the, the things you're talking about because he was okay. having the same problem. So we're probably going to have to do that with ours as well. Um, yeah. We have a problem with stairs, and I know your stairs are a little yeah. different, so get into stairs. So for us, um, we're in western Pennsylvania. Uh, there is no such thing as level ground. Right. So even if somebody's kind enough to level off a pad for the restroom trailer, it's almost always sloping up away from the stairs or down away. So uh, with our previous models, trailers, they were very contingent on level ground. Um, there was very little flexibility. The platform was a fixed platform. So if the ground sloped away, the platform sloped away. Right. Or if the ground sloped up, the platform would slope up to the point where you can't even open the door. So that was a big factor for us. We really um, wanted to make sure that our stair system was flexible to work with any ground. So ours is a slide away stair system. There's absolutely no tools whatsoever. Uh, very quick, very easy and they're self-leveling stairs. They can adjust for, you know, over 12 inches of, flux, of um, increase or decrease in ground and still have a nice symmetrical rise and run on your stairs. Right, and how Our is clients, the- that's one of the numbers that one things they point out is how much they like the stair system. Yeah, ours, uh, the guys who set it up said, you know, it can take 15 minutes to just set up everything else, but you can be there yeah. another uh, half hour to an hour just trying to get the stairs level. And the and handrails on and everything. And that's if all your guys haven't lost all the nuts and bolts and nothing stripped and you have all the tools and the, it's, yeah. um, even on, on the units that we had originally, even the, the railings were all removable and they weren't all uniform. Like there was a, you know, railing for the front and railing for the middle and a railing for the rear. And there was all these different parts and pieces that, were not interchangeable even. So not only did you have to have all the tools, know how to do it, but then you also had to be able to differentiate which rail goes where and which one's the front, which one's the middle, which one's the back. It's It was a, it was a constant problem for new employees. Right. Yeah, that's what the guys who set it up say. Like, first, if they don't get the stairs level, they can't get the railings on because it needs to be exact. Um, it's all interlocked. Yeah. And then each railing has its own hole and then uh then losing th losing things we've lost bolts and stuff you know so we've had to buy more but <laughs> yeah ideally going to set it up it should be a quick thing but it's taking the guys to deliver it a lot longer sometimes uh this one job we did we had to completely eliminate one of the restrooms because the stairs they were going to be so high up from where it was and you couldn't you couldn't even get them down cuz like you said it would have been a really steep incline yep. on those stairs can't even open the door a lot of times with them right so yeah so, so that was a big factor in us because you know we really we didn't want um you know 
trying to get new employees and try to train them on intricate things is, is very difficult. Uh, so that was a big factor when we were designing ours. We wanted it to be very simple. I wanted my tent crew to be able to deliver the trailer, set it up, and get out. I didn't want them to have to be, you know, specialized and extremely, um, you know, well taught in that simple aspect. So that's right. why everything is no tools. Uh, everything is simply labeled, quick deployment, um, just simplicity. Yeah, that's perfect. Because I- ideally, like I said, we want to show up and 15 minutes later be gone. And sometimes that does happen. Uh, you know, if we're doing it in a parking lot or whatever. But if we're on grass or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say yeah. it can take a really long time. And then, you know, where I am up in upstate New York, it rains a lot. So if we end up kind of getting stuck, uh, the, I mean, the truck can pull it out, but it kind of sinks and then the scissor jacks get in the way. So. Right. <laughs> but uh, yep. let's get into kind of more broad. Like uh, people got a lot of questions like, how do you empty it? What do you do? Do you fill the water beforehand? Do you hook up a hose? Uh, how do you power it? Kind of like the the broad questions that like a new customer who's kind of wanting to get yeah. into it. The number one question that people always ask us when they're getting into the business is, "What do I do with the waste?" Right. Um, you know, it's you're not in the business; you're a tent guy. It's uh, a whole new whole new avenue. Um, what you find is there's a common misconception that it's almost like a portable toilet where you're just you know right in there, but you never even see the waste. It's just a simple, you connect a hose to a dump valve and turn a valve. You're not directly dealing with sewage. Um, pretty much any one of your staff can do it without being completely freaked out. Uh, it's, it's not as ugly of a process as you would imagine. Right. The way you should do it, the way we recommend doing it and what we tell first time buyers is you, when you arrive on site, it's going to be empty, obviously the waste tank, and say your wedding's on a Saturday, um, the correct and safest way of doing it is to schedule a a septic company to come in after the wedding, maybe Monday morning, to pump the waste from the trailer. It's just a matter of hooking a hose to your dump valve on the front of the trailer, turning the valve, and pumping everything out. You show up Monday afternoon, hook up, drive away. That's the way most of the people starting out are supposed to do it. Right. and that's, that's what we recommend. I do hear from a lot of people that they just drive it home, even though we tell them they should not be doing that. Uh, every manufacturer will tell you the same, that you're not supposed to haul it with waste in it. But I know a lot of people, that's what they're doing. And, but they obviously should not be doing that. Right. Full disclosure, that's what we do. Um, so we, <laughs> we have mapped well, out all... Everybody. Right. We've mapped out all the campsites around us. And usually if we drive somewhere to deliver it, we know there's a campsite on the way back and a campsite only charges us seven to ten dollars to empty it. Um, If there is no campsite, then we bring it back to the warehouse and we have a a guy who comes and pumps them out. Um, The guys even met us on the side of the road before when we were going from like a Friday job to a Saturday job to empty it out. Uh he's also he has emptied out on us when we got stuck to make make it lighter and everything um i've also heard that you can get a slide in pump for the back of your truck or trailer and you can go empty it yourself correct and that's what we eventually did um you know when we first started we were following the manufacturer's recommendations wouldn't want to haul it with waste in it Um, we were scheduling septic companies to come pump it um once we got to like three or four units, that, that became challenging. It was a lot, of, a lot of back and forth, a lot of scheduling, uh, and a lot of difficulty. At that point, we, uh, we bought a little slide-in. Um, it, was a, it was 999 gallons, so it had roughly 700 gallons of waste holding and 300 gallons of fresh water holding. And basically, we just we bolted that to the back of an F-550 flatbed, and that became our delivery vehicle, our pickup vehicle, in our pump truck. So we would pull in um, after the events, hook up our little vacuum truck, pump out the waste tank, hook up the trailer, and then drive it home. Right. That worked out really well for us. And then what would you do with the waste? Bring it to a waste transfer station? or? Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's, there's all different uh, options out there. Um, for us, we would wait till we had a full tank, 
and we would take it to the lo- local uh, sewage authority and dump it there. I think they would charge us six cents a gallon or something. Right. It was very affordable. Right. So with that slide in unit, you're able to uh, save up your trip because if you go every time, that that's what kind of kills us. Having the um, septic guy come every time, he charges us a hundred bucks yeah. each time, whether we have one trailer or two trailers that we have to empty. So yeah, yeah. If There's we had a couple. A- a couple really good options that people have done. Um, obviously, you have to check with, you know, what your municipality allows and everything. I've heard of people just literally pulling in and um, dumping their truck or trailer right into their sewer cleanout port. Um, you have to verify that that's okay with the municipality. I mean, technically, you paid for the water and the sewage that's in that truck. So they can't really argue you didn't pay for it, but you'd want to make sure you're allowed to do that. Other clients with a lot of trailers, some of them got pretty creative. Um, If the sewage plant is too far away, they've actually uh, installed either above ground or below ground large holding tanks at their facility, maybe 1,000 gallons, 2,000 gallons, where they literally just pump the truck into the tank until it's full, then hire one septic truck to come and dump the whole thing out. Right. So instead of paying all those $100, $100, $100, you know, they basically pay $200 and have the whole thing emptied with one, one truck. Right. Yeah. That's a good idea. We've been thinking about doing that. There was a guy who owned a two unit near me and he also owned a restaurant and he would just pump it directly into his uh, septic tank. Uh, Cause okay. it was a big, it was a big restaurant. So you could handle it, but you're not going to be able to do that at your house. You'll fill it up real quick. And right. my friend who you sold a whole bunch of them to this past year out in Rochester, he installed that sewer th- sewer thing in his warehouse so he just brings them back to his warehouse and empties it into into the sewer system yeah and that's a uh, obviously the, the simple easy way of doing it you just have to make sure it's everything's on the up and up there right now about water like obviously needs water to flush and wash your yep. hands uh how how do people handle that so all the trailers i think pretty standard with everybody's trailers there's a, a standard city water hookup like a garden hose hookup on the exterior of the trailer if you're somewhere close to a garden hose that will provide enough pressure to run the whole system if you're in a location where you don't have access to water or you just don't want a hose running to the trailer um, you can add a fresh water system which essentially what that means is right inside the mechanical room is a big fresh water holding tank with a pump system So if you're doing a tented wedding and they don't want a hose running right there, you fill up this big holding tank in the trailer and all the water gets drawn from that tank and run through a pump to pressurize up the system. Right. And do you suggest filling that on site or can you fill it beforehand? So um, as the manufacturer, I'm telling you, just like always, you should never haul with all that extra weight. Um, You you should fill up on site. Uh, As a rental guy, I can tell you almost everybody fills up at the shop and drives it out. Uh, If you've seen some of our trailers, we put a giant uh, steel tank surround around the freshwater holding tank. So if someone were to be driving it with liquid in it, it is quite secure, uh, but you should always transport it empty. Right, we've we've had to modify our holding tank, build some things around it to keep from shifting because there are times where we have to fill water beforehand because it's in the middle of a field and nowhere. Yeah. Um, and most of the time we try to show up and use their hose. That's, that's what mostly happens is we fill it up at their house and then drive it into the field. For simplicity, that's, we always try to do that. And it really depended if the job was two hours away or three hours away, that's the route we'd try to go instead of hauling an extra 2000 pounds of water the whole way there. Right. But if it was a local job, um, we, on our rental site, we would always fill up at our facility and just pull in ready to go. It was just simple. Right. And then if they don't use all the water in the tank, is there a way to get rid of that water without having it go into the waste? So we we give everybody two options, actually three options. Um, You can either when you show up on Monday morning and you still have, uh, you know, water in your freshwater tank. We have a built in spray bar clean out system so you can turn a valve. And all the water left in the freshwater tank will actually pressurize and spray into the waste holding tank to help clean all the waste off the bottom. Typically, you're going to do that when you're evacuating the tank. So when you're when you're vacuuming out the tank, 
you hit that bar. So you're spraying fresh water, cleaning off the bottom of the tank, the whole way to the dump valve. That's cool. If, um, yeah, it's really helpful. It's just, uh, instead of just dumping the water on the ground, you're actually using it for something. Uh, and it helps really helps deodorize the tank. Well, your other options are, um, you know, say you're not evacuating the tank. You just want to dump the water. You can turn a valve, dump everything right on the ground, or you can turn a valve and dump everything into the tank. Um, right. The issue we always found was, even though it's just fresh, clean water, you, you, know, you practically drink it. If you dump it onto the ground, people will freak out. They think that you're dumping waste onto the ground, even though it's right. clean water. So you have to be careful. That's why we allow that third option to dump directly into the tank. If you're somewhere where the public is there, you want to dump it into the tank so people don't think you're dumping waste on the ground. But if you're at a tented wedding in the middle of a field, you can just dump it right on the ground or use your spray bar clean out. Right. That spray bar clean out is cool. I haven't heard of that before. Uh, Cause some occasionally we have to, you know, put a pressure washer in there and clean it out. But yeah. if you just did that every time, that would be amazing. Plus it would help get everything out. Right. That's what we recommend to everybody. We always tell people to tilt the front of the trailer down towards the dump valve. So everything's running that direction, hit the spray bar clean out. And it's just, cleaning that tank the whole time as you're pumping out the waste. Right. Another question I get a lot is um, people are always asking what, what sort of uh, permits or stuff do they need to own these? And I'm in New York state. I don't know if I need any permits. I've, we've done a little research, but uh, we don't own any permits. We just treat it like a trailer and an RV right. and we're fine. And no one's ever complained to us, but are, are there some States where there's more legal stuff you got to do? For the most part, no. I know there is, I honestly cannot recall which state, but one of our customers said that they had to get uh, a license. They had to actually go through training and get a special certification. That was primarily to be in the um, sewage business, whether you're doing portables, septics, anything like that. I don't know if that, uh, if, if you only own a trailer, I don't know if that would fall into that same category or not, but you definitely want to look into it. For us in Pennsylvania and you in New York, uh, it was no different than buying a tent. There was no, no extra anything. You just, it was just another piece of equipment. Yeah. That's what I found. No one's ever said anything that they got in trouble or, or had to get anything. It sounds like this guy, you said he had porta potties and he just maybe had more of a septic business and just was adding a trailer to, as a higher option for porta potties. That, that's what I gathered, but I, I can't speak for all the municipalities and states rules that, Right. My clients, um, that's the only time I've ever heard of it. Um, and again, I'm not sure if it was specific to trailers. I think it was more uh, permit and septic related. Yeah, that's the general answer I give everyone that it's just a trailer. And it's just a trailer that's similar to an RV that you take out cross country trip. And all you got to do is just empty it. Yes. So yeah, so people can just buy it and be ready to go. Yeah. You no, kind of brought up a good point there too with the, um, you know, the traveling. One of the things that we also ran into the issue is just like you said, we were always filling up our freshwater tank at the, at the office and driving out. Um, a lot of the trailers we owned weren't sized accordingly. Like the axles, um, the axle was too small. It was basically just big enough for the empty trailer. Mm. And as soon as I'd load, you know, 200 gallons or 1600 pounds of fresh water on it, I was actually over. I was overweight on the trailer. So you can run into some DOT issues or safety issues. So on a right. lot of our units, that was one of the things we did. Um, like even our small 14 and a half foot trailers um, in our pro series are dual axle. So you have uh, like 12,000 pounds of axles under, uh, just for that reason. If someone is hauling it with all that extra weight, you're, you know, you're not, you're not overweight on the trailer frame. Right. That's good. Cause that's probably why every, one of the reasons why everyone says to empty it on site and dump the water so that when you're traveling down the highway, you're not overweight and not getting yeah. in trouble with DOT. Um, but as you know, and as everyone is watching in the rental industry, we're going to fill the water before we go sometimes <laughs> and we're going to transport it with waste in it. So, yeah, that'd be good yep. to have better axles and not get in trouble with the DOT. Yep. It was in all of our years, um, I never had a. Uh, a waste holding tank break, but I talked to a lot of clients that have had it happen um, with other models, luckily not with lying trailers yet. But um, one thing we do is all of our waste tanks are 
custom welded copolymer tanks. So they are removable tanks. A, they're extremely tough. They're made of copolymer plastic. But if the event you ever did crack a tank, um, you can actually remove the tank, repair the tank, and replace the tank very easily. Right. Yeah. On that, what is the maintenance and stuff? Like I own two. I, I kind of already know the answer. The answer is basically it's a bathroom with plumbing and there's some electrical and you clean yep. the thing. It's it's a bathroom on wheels. So if you got sure. a little bit of construction experience or know someone, it's pretty easy to maintain. It, I mean, it's basically it's a combination of a, a trailer, which, you know, you're just treating that like a vehicle. You don't want to um, check your tire pressures, wash and wax it. Uh, one big thing that's important is for maintenance, you want to inspect your seals. Um, like, for example, on the, the, the roof seal. They're, they're really, really tough. They last for a long, long time. But in our industry, you're constantly positioning this thing in really tight spots. Uh, tree branches were always a problem for us. Right. You have to be careful that if you're dragging it under a tree branch and you cut a seal on the top or the corner of the trailer or something, obviously you want to be able to patch that up quickly. Um, so maintenance wise, other than washing and waxing on the exterior, just general inspection is, is a, is a, a good practice to do. Right. And then the inside is just, um, flexible plumbing, right? Yeah. The inside's all, you know, PEX, uh, we use all powder coated aluminum, uh, waterline covers. So I mean, it's no different than cleaning the bathroom in your office, or your warehouse. It's just a regular bathroom. The only, um, I guess, nuances that would be different than a regular bathroom are typically the urinals. The urinals are waterless urinals. So um, you do have to add a, a chemical to waterless urinals and occasionally replace a urinal trap. So that's really the only thing that's, um, I guess, unique in that aspect of it. Right. The only thing we really had to majorly do was our model has, um, I'm, I'm assuming most of yours do too, the push down sink thing so that people can't just turn on water and let it run. Yes. You just push it down. We had to replace a spring in that. But yep. even, even though we didn't know what we were doing, it was easy to figure it out. Yeah, that's um, the spring cartridge. All of ours are Delta faucets. They're readily available. So if you're not extremely savvy, uh, a lot of our clients literally just buy a new f entire faucet. Uh, they're about 70 bucks or 80 bucks on Amazon. And you can just unscrew the, the plumbing, drop this one in and screw it back in and you're back in business. But right. you can also quickly disassemble them, replace a cartridge for a few bucks. Right. The one thing that we did run into, and it was our septic guy who told us, was we didn't have a cover for the uh, the waste removal part. So we, we had yep. to order that on Amazon. And it's just an RV waste removal cover to fit our thing. Because um, yeah. we, we didn't get it with it when we bought it. Yeah, there. Um, we never had an issue with that in our rental industry. It really depends, I think, on the markets you serve. If you're doing public events or it's in a location where the public is around, it's a safe thing to have a locking cap on the dump valve just to prevent somebody from doing something stupid. Right. Um, it wasn't anything expensive. I think it was only 30, 40 bucks off of Amazon. And yep. uh, we didn't get in trouble or anything. Just, just the septic guy was like, you might want to have this because this would be an issue if you pulled over. Right. Well, I don't know if um, I've never had an issue DOT related or anything like that, um, you know, because there are locking valves. But uh, it, it is a, it is good practice to have the caps on them. Right. And then um, winterization, like uh, unless you get the one that can be used all year, uh, what is the winter winterization process or what should you do when you're not using it for your season? Yeah. So even if you have the Arctic package, which allows it to operate in the winter, um, that's only good if it's being used, you know, if it's plugged in and the heat's all running, you're good. But if it's just sitting at your uh, facility waiting for a job, it needs winterized. Um, you can do a couple things. A lot of our clients use air compressors to blow out the lines. Uh, we also include a really simple winterization port. So built right into our freshwater system is a hose that all you have to do is stick into a jug of antifreeze and run all of your facilities, run your sinks, run your toilets until the antifreeze has come through. That's, okay, that's uh, cool. the fastest way Yeah, you can, one person can do it in a matter of minutes. Um, right. just, that's a big process you'll find whenever, when you get a winter job, trying to 
winterize and de-winterize in a matter of hours. Uh, you want it to be simple and easy. Right. Yeah. I like your, the sound of your system. That's really cool. It only takes a few minutes. Ours takes a little longer um, getting all that fluid into every everywhere. Yeah. Do you have uh, the, yours is probably recommended. Do they want you to, to do like the hand pump and push it through the city water flange? And Yeah. Yeah. That, yep. That's, I remember that. That was, that was a major frustration. Right. Another frustration you mentioned on a phone call we had is the door handles on some of the competitors. Uh, again, I'm not going to bash who we got it from, but our door handles are a problem. Yeah. Well, the biggest problem you find is our industry is um, very similar to the RV industry. Uh, so most of the available parts that fit the designs are built around RVs. Uh, even the stairs a lot of times are built around RVs. And the problem is those RVs for are meant for your family who own it. There's a very small amount of people. They're respecting everything. It doesn't have to be the highest quality. Once you open a restroom trailer to the public, that all goes out the window. You need really, really high quality because the public will treat it extremely poorly. Right. Um, the doors, for that reason, most people buy a standard RV door. They're hollow. Um, it's pretty much just foam and a fiberglass skin. There's no meat behind it. So when your door closure um, gets caught in the wind and rips off or your door handle rips off, there's virtually nothing behind that handle to, to bond to or to hold to. It's, it's very chintzy. We always have that issue. We All of our doors, we custom build with aluminum tubing right behind all the hardware. So everything is actually bolted into rigid aluminum tube they're very very tough right yeah we just picked up one someone defaulted on on their loan for it so we picked it up for cheap but all the handles are missing so we're going to figure out a way to attach handles to this thing probably just do two metal plates uh sandwiched with really tight uh, bolts and then bolt the bolt the handle to that that's what we had to do on some of our old models uh, before we started building we would have to glue um you know, aluminum or steel plates to the, the chintzy structure and then bond or screw to that to try to get some strength. Right. Yeah. So I'll have to figure that out in the next few months. Um, <laughs> let's talk about like different styles because because there's there's from your basic one all the way to your luxury, amazing yep. one. So like what do most people start off with generally? So we have a couple different models. Um, our most popular model is going to be our Pro Series line. It's um, built really, really tough, very simple. So it can be used for construction or it can be used for nice events. Nothing over the top fancy, but nothing too um, industrial. It's kind of right in between. You can dress it up with some you know, decor and photo frames and things like that. Um, that's our number one seller. For clients that only do special events, high-end special events, and they want to differentiate themselves, we have our luxury series lines, which are very, very nice inside, you know, kind of more appearance-driven. When you walk in, you're like, oh, my God, this is so nice. Right. Um, where the Pro Series, most people, when they walk into a bathroom, what they care about is that it's clean, it's cool, and it's comfortable. So our Pro Series, that's what that's built around. It has all the functionality you need to impress your guests but it's not like um, over the top. Did you see how incredibly decorated and fancy the trailer is? That's for our luxury series. Right. We've got basically what you're in comparison. We basically got what you have for your pro series, just kind of like mm -hmm. a basic interior. And yeah, that's what we found is the most important thing is people walk in and it's got AC, it's got running water and it's clean. Um, yep. They can flush the toilet. There's toilet paper. They can wash their hands. It's a real bathroom. It may not be, uh, millionaire's mansion bathroom but <laughs> yeah. it's a real bathroom it's not a porta potty and most people are just like blown away that this thing is in their yard and that this thing even exists most people don't even know right. that these exist to begin with and then they walk into it at the event and they're so pleased not having a crap in blue water <laughs> right and that's uh, our whole fleet um, you know up until uh, recently we our luxury series is a new release for 2019 so we never even had that offer. Um, so my entire rental fleet was pro series units right. and we would do extremely high end events. We've had, uh, I know for a fact, we've had the president of the United States 
use our Pro Series bathrooms. So it's uh, it's everything you need for a bathroom. It's there. It's does I, in my opinion, for most events, they don't have to be over the top fancy. Some special events, um, you know, it's a nice touch. But for the most part, the Pro Series is what we recommend to people starting out. Yeah, I, for my particular market, I don't ever see needing to get all the extra trim and everything. Just the basics, the AC, the running water, and clean. Yep. But uh, yeah, and for, for that same token, we, we have a lot of clients that are very price driven. Um, for that reason, we also released our Eco Series, which what we did was we took our Pro Series <clears throat> and we paired out anything that wasn't essential to the user. So your guests still have the same experience. It's still cool, clean, comfortable, running water. It's just condensed. Uh, we've made the floor plan as tight as possible while still being comfortable. Um, we've eliminated some of the bells and whistles, um, things like battery backup systems and uh, waste tank spray bars, anything that your customer doesn't absolutely need to have a good experience, we took out of that unit to, to drive the cost down. So right. if somebody's in a situation where they need to get in or want to get into the restroom trailer business, but they are on a really, really tight budget, that's where we have a, that eco series. And it's kind of has everything you need, but nothing that is not absolutely essential. Right. One thing that we decided not to get when we ordered ours was a built-in radio system. Um, yeah. and all we do is we can put a radio in the maintenance room and, you know, turn it up a little yep. and you can still hear it throughout the whole place. You don't actually need a built-in radio system. Right. We, uh, most of my units didn't have the stereo system. We do find, especially when we're at trade shows and things like that, for such a small upgrade, it is unbelievable the response you get from people walking in. Um, right. Just hearing music when you walk in just helps it def differentiate so much more than a portable. Right. You know, as if the, the air conditioning and comfortable space and everything isn't enough. When they hear the music, that kind of sets it over the top of how different this is. Right. I think it'll be cool. I don't know if there's a way to do this, but somehow get the DJ to be playing the same music in the stereo that's in there. And then mm -hmm. announcements well, are made. You're in the bathroom. You can hear everything. Our, all of our systems are Bluetooth systems. So um, I'm sure if he has the, if he can pair with, with the system, that would probably work just fine. Yeah, that's cool. I, yeah. I don't know of anyone trying it yet, but I, I would think that would work. Right. Um, so what are some tips and suggestions to all these people who want to get into it? I've been taught, I've been trying to talk people into getting in, into these, <laughs> um, because it's an excellent return on investment. Like yeah. we made our money back the first year, uh, yeah. and it's not a lot of labor, uh, and you just get a return on investment back real quick. So what are some tips, tricks, any advice you have to anyone who's wants to get into this? So especially for party rental people. It really is a no brainer. Um, one of these trailers is probably at almost every tented wedding you're delivering your tents to. Uh, you probably have an extra pickup truck that's hauling crew to your tent site anyways that could be hauling you know, roughly two grand behind it. Um, and the sale we always found was unbelievably easy. I mean, nobody booked a whole tent that went and lighting and their tables and chairs and didn't get the restroom trailer. It was just a one-stop shop convenience. So it was, it was really, it was just a, a simple common sense uh, addition to our inventory. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what we found too, is uh, we're an existing rental company. So it was really easy for us to get it out um, because people were renting all that stuff and then they needed that. So they just got it from us. Uh, I do see if you're the only, if that's the only thing you have is a restroom trailer, it's going to be a little harder. You're going to have to do a little more marketing, but you can still do mm -hmm. it. The main guy near us, that's all he does is restroom trailers. He doesn't do the rest of the event and he gets them out every weekend. I think he's got like five, six units. Oh, sure. And there's, uh, you know, to me, it's, uh, it's a no brainer, but a lot of my friends in the party rental business, they wanted nothing to do with it. Um, we had a, a local competitor who we were good friends with. He would rent two to three trailers a week from us for years, for right. 10 years. Um, you know, he could have paid for his trailers five times over if he would have just bought them, but he had no interest in adding them to his inventory. So they're not for everybody. Um, for me, it was a no brainer, but for some people, they just have no interest in adding it. So if well, you, there's a, if you have a trailer, 
though, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. There's a common misconception because okay. I was the same way. I was like, I don't want to be dealing with poop or anything. Right. Uh, and then once I started looking into it more, it was like, oh, you don't ever even see it. And right. it's easy. Yeah, and that's, I think that's pretty much the stigma that keeps a lot of people out of it. But if you're, if you're a person that is not in the party rental business but just wants to get trailers, what you want to do is approach – all the party rental companies in your area that don't offer them. And um, my recommendation would be to offer them an incentive, give them some literature, um, maybe a, a, a brochure of your trailer, a PDF that they can forward to brides. And basically anytime, anytime they sell your trailer, give them a, you know, a discounted rate or a kickback on it. And, you know, it's, they're going to keep you busy. If you've got a party rental company that doesn't have a unit, um, it, it's like fish in a barrel for them to sell it. So if they don't have a trailer, try to get them to sell yours. Right. And, and if they can make a hundred, 150 bucks on not actually having to do anything, if that's the mm-hmm. kind of discount you're giving them, that's, that's good for them. I mean, we've had a sub rent trailers, um, when we overbooked and yeah, they usually give us a 10% discount. So we're making money on top of it, still fulfilling the customer. Uh, so it's, it's always worked out. Oh, Absolutely. There is a rental company around me who advertises that he has restroom trailers. I know he doesn't. I don't even know where he gets <laughs> he gets them from. They're so expensive. I think someone's coming up from Pennsylvania to do all his. When I don't think he does them every weekend, but he offers them. So yeah, if if you don't already own a rental company, we'll just do what you said. Just get it in contact with all the rental companies, and they'll be your main customer. Yep. The key is just to make it simple for them. You know, you should provide the literature. Um, you know. You should make it very simple. Give it as a turnkey. Look, this is what it costs. Here's all the photos of it. Here's all the features. Just hand everybody this flyer or email them this flyer. Um, that's all you got to do. And have it right on the bottom, make sure it's tell them that, you know, where the referral came from and you'll get your 10% kickback. As long right. as it's simple for them, they'll, you know, it's a no brainer. People are probably asking them for them anyways. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you have any other suggestions for anyone or any common things that get ran into in this particular business? Um, you know, it's hard. There's, there's a, a million different ways to look at it. Um, I think if, especially for tent people, um, strongly consider it. It's, uh, it really is a great revenue stream and the beauty of it is low labor. Um, there's no additional warehouse space. There's no additional staff, no additional trucks, and the longevity of the units far outperforms tents and most rental equipment. Right, and the now, resale you, value you know, stays high. Yeah, we've uh, I've had people buy used units for more than a new unit uh, just because they need it right now, and new units were you know six eight weeks out to produce. So right. that it's incredible how well the uh, the return is on a used unit compared to trying to sell a used tent where you get pennies on the dollar right 20 cents on the dollar um on on that note uh people can't usually expect just to call and then have it next week there is a lead time because you do build these for people right we do i mean we we do our best to always have um, some of our most popular units in stock Um, however certain times a year no matter how many units we try to stockpile for the busy season they still get depleted in the busy season. What is the lead time on it? So typically a, a lead time is about six weeks, six okay. to eight weeks. Um, if you're in the busy season, you know, okay. if you're trying to get a unit for anywhere between, um, March and June, you're, you're looking at six to eight weeks. Right. Yeah. So call in advance. Uh, yeah. The, the, the first one we actually bought someone, they had built it for someone, and then that person canceled their order. So we were lucky and uh, we're ba- we basically were able to get it the next week um, at a discount because the other person canceled. And the second one we got was because someone defaulted on a loan and we were able to get that pretty quick too. Yeah, some of the, the common questions we get is what size unit do I actually need for my rental company? Um, that question is pretty, um, it's pretty crazy how much it differs. It really depends on what your average capacity wedding is. Uh, Being in the tent business and renting chairs, you you have a pretty good idea of what the most common size weddings or events are in your industry. Obviously, there's going to be special occasions that are larger or smaller. But um, 
it seems like the average wedding size across the country uh, is is anywhere between 150 and 250. That seems to be about the the norm. I talked to some people in certain parts of the country where the average is 300, right. and other people where the average is 75. So you really have to base it on your market. Um, but there are a lot of factors uh, when it comes to facilities. What most people don't realize is it's usually not about the size of the waste tank or the size of the freshwater tank. It's rarely an issue that you're going to overflow your trailer. Typically, the issue is lines. You know, if you have 200 people and only a men's room and a women's room, there is going to be a line 10 people deep. They're probably right. not going to overflow the trailer in five hours, but they're going to be mad that it took 30 minutes to be able to get into the bathroom. So what we always did was we had a size chart for our rental company to make it easy on the sales staff. We basically assumed that every event had alcohol being consumed, which was a major factor. Right. There's alcohol being consumed, the usage doubles. Um, we used to tell people our two station trailers were good for up to 125 guests for five hours. And then from 125 to 200 guests was our three station trailers. And then pretty much once you went from 200 to 300, we'd put you right into a five station. Um, you can never have enough restroom facilities. You can have 10 facilities for 70 people. There's nothing wrong with that. It's right. just a matter of you don't want to be buying a trailer that's unnecessarily large. Right. So a great starter trailer is a three station uh, or a five station. When you're starting out, I always tell people, if you're only going to own one trailer, make sure it's big enough to accommodate the bulk of the phone calls. You don't want to skimp and buy a two station. And the first call you get is for 200 people and you have this trailer that you can't even use. So right. If you only own one trailer on your first trailer, you want to make sure you, I would recommend at least a three station between three and five stations. That way you can capitalize on every opportunity you get until you have more units to vary in size. Yeah. That's, that's what I found. Actually, when I got married, we didn't own the restroom trailer yet and I had to rent one and they talked us into a two unit and said it was going to be fine. Problem uh -huh. was, was a bunch of lines. i now realized what they did later on is that's all they had left and that's why they talked us yep. into it but uh you know the, the men's room was fine it was the ladies side who always had a line and none of the ladies wanted to go use the men's uh right. side because it was labeled men's so actually what we did is we just took the labels off and said you know we haven't put labels on but some, we're going to put something on that's like a unisex or whatever um just so that it can alleviate lines because a lot of times the men's one is open and the women's one has a line of 10 people. Right. Um, so we try to, we actually have a four unit the, where we bought ours from. They have a four unit and we try to push everyone to that. Even if they got an 80 person party, uh, we just yep. say like, it's way better to be in this. And if, if that's booked up, we say we have a two unit. It's not going to be sufficient for your party, but we have it if, if you want it. And most of the time people will still get it, but we do make it clear yeah. that it, there might be at timelines. Yeah, absolutely. And it's usually those those focal points of the wedding, right when the bar closes, right after the first dance, you know, there's always those few moments that everybody gets up and goes to the restroom. And that's when you'll start seeing the major lines. Right. And and for us, we don't have that much of a pre we got two hundred dollars between a two unit or a four unit. So okay. it's not that crazy for us to upsell an 80 person party to a four unit because we're just like, it's another two hundred dollars. It's It's not that crazy. And most people go with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for that kind of difference, that would make sense. Right. But I, I think that's about it. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Where can people get a hold of your company if they want to get a quote or get some information? Yeah. And the best thing to do is you can uh, jump on the website, kind of see some different model pictures. And that is langrestroomtrailers.com. Awesome. You can I'll also... Oh, yeah, you can also email me directly at adam at langtrailers.com. Okay. I'll put both of those down in the description. So if anyone wants to contact you and uh, you're usually at one of the rental shows, right? I know one just happened, but. Yep. Well, the, we always attend the, um, the wet show uh, is one of the largest shows in the industry. Um, and then there's PSAI, which was in Baltimore this year, but it got canceled due to the COVID-19. Right. 
Um, so there's a variety of trade shows each year that we attend and, uh, you know, somebody wants to see them. You're more than welcome to come for a plant tour. A lot of clients choose to come here and do a tour first, or they can obviously see us at the trade shows. Right. And where are you guys based out of again? Pennsylvania. Okay, cool. So you're actually not that far from me either. I'm up in upstate New York, so maybe I'll come down and visit someday. Yeah, we're 30 miles east of Pittsburgh, so stop in anytime. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for uh, coming on. No problem. Uh, and they fell into a... Jesus. Okay, so today's video... I'm not doing so good. Tyler's not just... Okay, so... So, uh, okay. Let's see. This will be an edit point. Is there anything else you want to go over? Uh, okay. All right. So a thing that we run into a lot is, is people are, you know, <laughs> I'm going to start that over. I got to think how I'm going to ask that question. How should I ask that question? Um, I can kind of field that if you want. I can tell when you said like tips for people, I can kind of, you want to edit into there. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead.